Good evening and welcome to Shano News, your positive source in a crazy world. I'm your host, Jamie Lee. Tonight, we're at the Sugar Shack hiking trail through Shano Pathways. Let's put on our snowshoes and hike to the full moon. <laughs> One of the volunteers and park rangers and guides, Mary Lisa, is kind enough to let me borrow her snowshoes and is going to let me know how to put these things on. What do I do here? Okay, I need you to just step right in here, twitch your toe all the way up to the, there you go, and then heel down. Excellent. These seem pretty fancy. Are these? You know, I got these for Christmas. You're lucky. You I must have been upgrade. a good girl. I got an upgrade this year for Christmas. And I love your eagle hat. What's his name? Thank you. Sparky Eagle is going to be helping me guide uh, the Orange Trail hike tonight. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And then the bindings just come around like this. Lots of shoes have different bindings, but this one's like a ski binding. You'll recognize that when I just start. You just kind of ratchet it back. Mary Lisa, maybe I am naive, or like I said, I haven't done this before, but I thought snowshoes were those big wicker um, well, wooden things. Well, they sure were. The original uh, snowshoes were ones that were, you know, they were all woven and made out of the big, like a big uh, wooden frame. And um, that's what they were. But these are modern. And now I yes. have these poles and- Yes, you will be very stable. I think I'm set. Guide me. You look like you're ready to go. Shano Pathways. Vroom, vroom. We have the pleasure of speaking with Shano Pathways president, Nancy Keller. Thanks for having us, Nancy. We're great. We're grateful that you're here. It's it's fun to be outside with you. A little cold. I think we picked one of the coldest days of the year. Is it like two degrees out? It'll be close to that tonight. Yes, it's one of our colder <laughs> snowshoe hikes. We've been lucky with weather so far, but tonight is uh, definitely for your double mittens and hand warmers. <laughs> and luckily we'll be doing some exercise and warming up. Yes, you do stay much warmer. We're cold now because we're kind of standing still, but once we get moving out in the woods with our snowshoes on and our, using our poles, we'll warm up. We'll and come. last night we got some fresh snow, so does that help? It does. It makes it more fun to walk on the trails. Nice and, <laughs> nice and crunchy. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so can you tell us, when people come and want to do the snowshoeing, they come and they first register. Tell me what people need to do, when they need to come, and what this all entails. Sure. We like people to come and register so we know who's here, and if there's an emergency, we know who to contact. So there's a little registration card like every event has. And then they're going to choose which hike they want to be on. The short hike, which is under an hour, the medium hike, about an hour. The long hike, we're probably not going to go real long tonight. We're going to keep it a little shorter, maybe just over an hour. And uh, there'll be guides on each of these hikes, one or two guides, with lights so nobody will get lost. But we like to acquaint people with these trails so they can come back and do it on their own anytime. And I also see you have some little supplies for everyone. What do we all have here? Well, if you need some sugar to warm up and some energy, we've got some granola bars and a little bit of candy. Some neck warmers, too, so if you're feeling the breeze here, we'll, we have a Shadow Pathways special neck warmer. And we've got hand warmers, and I'm using mine already. Um, my hands get really cold, so I've always got a pair of hand warmers. If somebody didn't bring one, we're glad to have them take one of ours. Now, do participants need to pre-register for this event, or can they just show up? They can just show up. And we've got our other two hikes coming up, so I think you're going to talk about those. But next week at Cranky Lake, and then two weeks from now we're back here at the Sugar Shack. No need to pre-register for either one of those. People just, just show up, come about 15 minutes before the start time so you can get your snowshoes on, get your mittens on, register, and decide which hike you're going to take. And we will tag and put that in the description with all the times and the locations at either, again, shanopathways.org on Facebook, but will also be on this Facebook description. Um, can we let the participants also know they have to bring their own snowshoes and, and claws, or what are these things called? Poles. <laughs> what is some advice you have for a first-time snowshoer? Well, first of all, it's going to be hard to get on the snowshoes. The hardest part about snowshoeing is getting your snowshoes on. So you have to just stick with it, get the snowshoes on, and it's easier once that part is over. I think this is the perfect segue to have my old teacher, Maddie, show me the ropes of snowshoeing. So come on, Maddie, time for gym class. 
Who says I can't redeem myself from gym class in 1996? Here with Maddie for a little winter instruction on snowshoeing. We're here at the beginning of the trail where you'll notice the path. Can you tell us about um, if people come here by themselves without one of these special dates, what they can see? Well, uh, we got a grant to identify and map and sign uh, six routes, three here and three over at Cranky, uh, Cranky Lake. And so the maps are available in these map holders. Uh, so if people come on their own, we suggest they pick up a map. And then we also have these laminated ones uh, throughout the area. There's about seven of them out there. So people can say, okay, I am there. So kind of know where they are a little bit. And isn't this kind of um, a divine timing again? We did the Grace Trail episode, and now I have the pleasure of doing another trail with you. Yeah. So tell um, a snowshoe virgin what to do here. How do I get going? What is safe for me? And how do I walk decent? Well, you walk just like you normally would. You're right and left, <laughs> okay. opposite. Yep. And um, you don't have to run with them. You find out that it's hard to walk backwards. Yeah, you can't so it's moon just, walk. Okay. It's just opposite arm and leg, lifting your toes a little bit if there's deep snow, otherwise the front of your snowshoe will catch in the snow, so just kind of kick your toes up a bit. I mean, one thing about being out here in the wintertime, there's no mosquitoes, there's no ticks, <laughs> it's quiet, you just dress, and you can always dress and stay warm. The magic words are dress in layers. Cotton kills, so forget about cotton clothes, um, find some good insulating for your first layer, then a warm, warm clothing for your second, and then wind protection for your third. Now today, I think you have four layers on, don't you? I do, Which four leggings on. And, and your hat, that's so important because we lose a lot of heat through our head. And just but, disconnecting again from oh. the busyness of the internet and town and TV. We're out here in nature and oh, I just feel that, that breeze. There's not a breeze, but just that chill on your face. It and, makes you feel alive. And, and fresh air. You know, when I get done hiking out here, I go home and it's just, I'm a different person because I think being outside helps you heal. It just, you're breathing fresh air and you aren't working on your list of things to do. You're just playing, enjoying nature. And, and again, right here in the backyard of Shawnee. Yeah. Such beautiful nature to enjoy right here, right where we live. Yeah. And, Let's keep hiking. Can you tell us how the landowners came together and decided this? Well, I went to all of them. Um, I hike this area quite a bit. Tom and Karen Grover live across the road, and they've always said, go ahead and do that. And I know the Wendorfs and the Ingalls, they, they always cook their maple syrup. And so we've hiked here before. And then when we got this idea of starting a, a snowshoe uh, paths and making a map, I went to the Bittner brothers, three Bittners, um, and they, they have the maple syrup pipeline, which is really, really a neat thing to hike. And that's on the other side of the swamp. Is that why this is named the Sugar Shack Trail? Yes, because mm -hmm. all, all trails lead back to the Sugar Shack. And what's really neat, like on our March 5th hike, uh, they will give us a tour. Anybody who wants to see how the sap is cooked up, and they sell maple syrup that day. Um, so well, how sweet is that? It's very <laughs> sweet. It's very sweet. Um, so it's the Wendorfs and then Steve Miller, our, our Steve Grover, owns some land up there. So we've got many generous landowners who just said, go ahead, uh, hike on it, enjoy it. Local kindness. You bet. And you know what's extra special tonight? It's a full moon. I know. So, that's why oh, this oh, is called oh, a full moon hike. Full moon hike. Yes. Let's get going, girl. Okay, let's go. Like he said, this is really good exercise. You're using all your muscles. You don't have to race. You can yeah. kind of zone out or you can maybe work up a little sweat and you're not even worried that it's only three degrees out. <laughs> well, you know, it's so good because any, any age group, any person can do this. Um, if I'm alone and I want to get a good workout in, I just uh, go as fast as I feel like going. But if you're just here to enjoy the beauty and visit with people, you can do that too. So if you want to work out, so many people think snowshoeing isn't a workout, but it certainly can be, especially if you're breaking trails with, through fresh snow. 
Well, Maddie, I think that we're new hiking partners. I think we could do this again. I so, love it. And, and you passed a Pafayad class for the third time Yay! now. Yay, <laughs> I get an A. Thanks, Maddie. <laughs> Look who I ran into. We have two people from Arkdale, Wisconsin, drove two hours specifically to come to this trail. How did you guys enjoy it? We loved it. We only wish we would have taken one of their maps. <laughs> <laughs> so you were able to find your way, though, just by the trails? We were. They had it marked really well. Great. Yeah, it was beautiful. And um, would you suggest other people come to this trail? Absolutely. We may come tomorrow morning to do it again. Yeah. Wow, it was that good. Yeah, it we was. It. Well, thank you for coming to Shano Pathways and enjoying our area. Thank you. Welcome right. to Shano. Thank you. <laughs> Another full circle moment. I am here with Kevin, who reminded me I met him on the first story at the ambulance a year later, and we're back doing the trail together. Kevin, thanks for all your hard work saving lives in your day job, and now you're here helping maintain the trails through the pathways. Tell us your job, your volunteer here, what you do. We go along and we, we re replace signs that have gotten tipped over by storms. You know, the things happen where a branch will come down and knock a sign over. We reorient them if necessary. Sometimes branches come down across the trail and we have to clear those. So we've got to remove them out of the way. There's times that we've had to rebuild bridges across some of the waterways that don't freeze sufficiently that we can get across them. So all of those things are things that take materials. They take money to buy the materials and it takes you know volunteers time so we enjoy doing it I love you know being able to help support pathways by going out and, and maintaining these trails the more we use them the more we enjoy them so like you said Kevin it takes a lot of time effort and funds yes, to keep this going so if you're interested in donating to Shano Pathways, please again visit, visit their website at shanopathways.org or the Facebook page. Again, you'll have opportunities to donate and you'll see the schedule for more trails and hikes to come. Thanks, Kevin. I guess you're Shano News Star, second episode. Second one, yes. <laughs>